Do you have a favorite NBA role player? Of course you do. They're the best. They're the unsung heroes. The guys who don't get all the minutes, who don't get all the touches, who have to make every shot count. Whether they're specialists, locker room guys, glue guys, or what have you, the best role players just make your team better. And I'm not talking about guys like Dennis Rodman or Manu Ginobili, elite Hall of Famers who got overshadowed by teammates. I'm talking about guys like Steve Kerr, Vinnie Johnson, Derek Fisher, Danny Green, and Michael Cooper, just to name a few. And when you talk about the best role player who has ever played in the NBA, I will not listen to a word you say unless we are talking about Robert Ory. Who's Robert Ory, you might ask? Oh, he's just a 6'10 stretch forward who was drafted 11th overall in the 92 draft. He played for 16 years and was a versatile plus defender who made second team all rookie. He averaged seven points, five rebounds, and two assists a game for his career. And that's it. Never an all-star, never an all-NBA anything. Except he did win seven NBA championships. He won more championships than Michael Jordan did. More championships than Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He has more rings than LeBron James and Wilt Chamberlain combined. His seven titles are the most won by any NBA player who was not part of the Bill Russell Celtics dynasty of the 1960s. And Robert Ory wasn't just on the team that won the championship seven times like some schlub. More often than not, he had at least one profoundly memorable playoff moment that helped tip the scales in his team's favor. He's remembered as Big Shot Rob. There's a section on his Wikipedia page that's just notable playoff clutch plays, for Christ's sake. When I did the whole, oh, he was a second team all rookie and that's it thing, I was giving you the runaround. And you fell for it like a chump. Robert Ory still has the record for the most steals in a single finals game. Still has the record for the most threes hit in a playoff game without a miss. He registered more career playoff steals than Dwayne Wade more playoff blocks than Kevin Garnett, and brought down more boards in the playoffs than David Robinson or Moses fucking Malone. He retired with the record for the most career three-pointers hit in the finals and walked away as the game's all-time leader in playoff games played. He had that dog in him. He was always calm, cool, and collected. The furthest thing from a rah-rah guy. But he didn't give a single shit about minutes or touches. And to a man, all of his former teammates swear by him and rave about how smart he was. Now, the elephant in the room. Was he lucky? Was it luck that he found himself on championship caliber rosters next to all-time greats year after year? Yeah, sure, if you hate fun. But if you're like me and you don't hate fun, you know that Robert Ory succeeded all those years because of his innate greatness because he possessed the Midas touch. Because what you call luck is his intentional manipulation of the fabric of the basketball universe to his will. That he is the orchestral conductor of the theoretical framework for existence that we call string theory. <clears throat> Sorry. Got away from me a bit there. He was a totally pedestrian player by almost every metric. And then, when the lights were brightest, when the chips were on the table, he got the goddamn job done, like few players ever have. His legend began his rookie year, the 92-93 season with the Rockets. The second round of the playoffs against the Sonics comes down to a game seven. With 35 seconds left, the game is tied. Who hits the shot to take the lead as the shot clock expires? Robert Ory. Houston lost the game in OT, but still. Rookie season, clock running out, playoff game seven, biggest shot of the season, cans it. He didn't really have any crazy heroics when the Rockets won the title the next year in 94. Just really good contribution that consistently got better as they made it deeper and deeper into the playoffs. He was the team's sixth leading scorer in the regular season, became their fourth leading scorer in the playoffs, and was the Rockets' third leading scorer in the finals against the Knicks. He made up for the heroic stuff the next year in the 95 playoffs. 
The Rockets played the Spurs in the conference finals, the series that's best remembered for the Elijah One Dominates Robinson video. But Robert Ory did his part too. In the first game, he only made one shot. What was it? The game winner with six seconds left. Robert Ory hits the jumper. For most guys, that would be enough. But not Robert Ory. In the 95 finals, he came alive. Where in the regular season, he had averaged 10 points and five rebounds a game, he lit the magic up to the tune of 18 points and 10 rebounds in the finals. Yeah, he nearly doubled his regular season stats in the finals. Did Michael Jordan ever do that? Uh, I don't think so. And that's still not all. In Game 3 of the Finals, the Rockets were looking to take a 3-0 series lead and essentially clinch the series. Clinging to a one-point lead in the game's dying seconds, the ball finds its way to its favorite spot in the world, the hands of Robert Orr. Orr for three! With 14 seconds left in the game, he buries the dagger, icing the game and the series. The Rockets went on to sweep, becoming back-to-back -back NBA champions. Again, for a lot of guys, that would be enough. For like, a whole career. Being a key player on back-to-back -back champions with a couple ice-cold game winners under your belt? That's already a pretty sick career. But Big Shot Rob was just getting started. He got traded to the Suns during the 97 season as part of the Charles Barkley deal. He didn't like it in Phoenix and really didn't like head coach Danny Ainge, so Ori did what anyone would do, and threw a towel in his coach's face in the middle of a game. Four days later, he was traded and became a part of the 1997 Los Angeles Lakers. The same 97 Lakers that had just signed Shaquille O'Neal and who had just drafted Kobe Bryant. He only played in 32 games for the Suns before getting himself traded to the league's next dynasty. When the Lakers rounded into shape and became contenders a couple years later, you can be good and goddamn sure that Robert Ory was there for it. In a huge Game 4 of the 2000 Finals against the Pacers, a game remembered for the Kobe-Reggie duel, Ory helped man the fort with 17 huge points off the bench. He shot 60% from the floor, went 5 of 7 from the line, and led the team in plus-minus. The Lakers won the game to take a 3-1 series lead and Ori got his third championship ring after they won the title in Game 6. The next year, in the 0-1 Finals against the Sixers, Robert Ori saved the day again. With the series tied 1-1, one one, things were slipping away from the Lakers in Game 3. Shaq and Derek Fisher were playing in foul trouble, Kobe was ice cold, and the Sixers were rallying back, with the Philly fans losing their minds. So, after just three points through the first three quarters, Ori had a perfect fourth quarter. Literally, three for three from the field. An early three-pointer to stave off the rally. Yes! Oh, Robert Ori, how often have we seen him? A huge, nasty dunk over Dikembe Mutombo. And the game's biggest shot. A monster three-pointer with 47 seconds left to kill the Sixers' momentum and extend the lead to four. And when Philly had to play the foul game, he went four for four from the line. Seven of his 12 fourth quarter points came in the last 47 seconds of the game. Not to mention his exceptional defense throughout. The Lakers won the game and then the title five days later. What a player. For good reason, they were talking after the game about how Robert Ory did not have blood, but ice water coursing through his veins. If only they knew. He was still just laying the foundation for his greatest hits. Now a four-time NBA champion, Ori and the Lakers were looking to three-peat in the 2002 playoffs. Trying to win the game and sweep their first round best of five series against the Blazers, the Lakers are down two points with 10 seconds left in game three. Take a wiki wiki wild wild guess what happens next. Yep, Robert Ory, three-pointer, to win the game. He finished the game with eight points. That was the only three that he made. Mwah. Chef's kiss. 
Which brings us to one of Big Shot's chart toppers in the 2002 Western Conference Finals. Kings Lakers, a series that is remembered for being chippy and competitive throughout, and for literally nothing else. Entering Game 4, the Kings held a 2-1 series advantage over the Lakers. And if the Lakers fall down 3-1, it's probably curtains on the season. They have to claw their way out of an early hole in the game, rallying from a 24-point deficit in the first half, cutting into the lead bit by bit. Leading this charge is our main character, Big Shot Rob. His 16 second-half points are the most of any player in the game, and his last three were the most important. In one of the most consequential games of the Shaq-Kobe era, with just under 12 seconds remaining in the game, the Lakers have fought all the way back to make it just a two-point ball game. Kobe makes his move with seven seconds left. He misses a floater. Shaq misses the tip. The ball is batted out. Now that's balls. He walked into this game already carrying the reputation as one of the game's great clutch players, spearheads a furious second half comeback, and buries the most dramatic game-winning shot possible to save the Lakers season and championship hopes. There have only been a few LA athletes in the last 35 years that can match Big Shot's killer instincts. He's right up there with Kirk Gibson, Kobe, Gretzky, and OJ. We've gone through nine Robert Ory moments so far, and we're not even going to talk about his buzzer beater against the Pacers in the 03 season. He's got it quickly for the win! Yes! A regular season game winner? <laughs> Come on, this is Robert Ory we're talking about. He signed with the Spurs as a free agent after the 03 season. Of course, in just his second season in San Antonio, he was facing the defending champion Detroit Pistons in the 2005 NBA Finals. The Spurs jumped out of the gates and won the first two games of the series. But Detroit rallied and bodied the Spurs in games three and four, winning both by a combined 48 points. The Pistons' outstanding physicality and defensive intensity was clearly bothering Tim Duncan. And with the tide of the series shifting in favor of the Pistons, game five was crucial. Another Pistons victory, and that 3-2 hole seems mighty deep. Like... 14-year-old listening to Breaking Benjamin at 2 o'clock in the morning deep. Game 5 is tight, and Duncan is struggling again. But our hero is waking up. Right before the third quarter buzzer, Robert buries a triple, his first points of the game. He nails another one to start the fourth. And with four minutes left in the game, he makes a huge three to keep the Spurs in. At this point, the game is his property. He saves it again. And Ori goes to the hoop and gets fouled. Then he does it again. Short, but Ori is there to follow. And again. Looking for his sixth championship ring, coming off the bench at the age of 34, Big Shot Rob is doing it again. The game goes into overtime, knotted at 89 points apiece. The Pistons control the period and hold a four-point lead with just 90 seconds remaining. Ori catches a low pass and uncorks an absolute motherfucker right on top of Richard Hamilton. And with 9.4 seconds to go, the Spurs trail by two points. Ori is the inbounder. He is absolutely on fire. You'd think the Pistons, one of the great defenses of the modern era, would have someone whose job is just do not leave Robert Ory open under any circumstances. They do not. Here's Ginobili. Oh, to Ory for three. Oh, he drills the three. Spurs win. All in all, he scored 21 of the Spurs' last 35 points. It was his highest scoring playoff game in eight years. In a potentially title swinging finals game with guys like Chauncey Billups, Tim Duncan, Ben and Rashid Wallace, Manu Ginobili, Rip Hamilton and Tony Parker out there, 34 year old Robert Ory was the best player on the floor when it counted the most. That is Big Shot Rob. Just when you think you've seen it all, 
just when you think there isn't anything else this guy can do, he does it again. I'd say he saved his best for last, but that's not technically true. That was his best, but it wasn't quite his last. In the 2007 playoffs, he nailed a dagger in the first round to ice game four against the Nuggets and take a 3-1 series lead. A clutch shot that is so innocuous in his catalog at this point that it hardly bears mentioning at all. And the last stand of Robert Ory, his little bighorn, the last time he swung a playoff series, came against the Suns in the following round. Phoenix is wrapping up a game four win that will tie the series at two games each. The time to act is now, thinks Robert. At 36 years old, he has to get creative. To change this series, he has to do something careful, precise, and impeccably timed. Most importantly, it has to be subtle. So he body checked the piss out of Steve Nash. A dirty hit, you might say. A cheap shot, in fact. Wah, 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 I hear you cry. Clayton, dear Clayton, surely this did not affect the series in any way. This is an act of pure frustration, nay, barbarism on the part of our beloved Robert. Oh, my sweet summer child, silence your trills. You see, Robert Ory knows that if he lays out Steve Nash, Nash's teammates are going to get pissed. And if they get pissed, they're going to try to confront him. And if they want to confront him, they will have to leave the bench. And in the wake of the malice at the palace, the NBA has instituted a rule that mandates any player who leaves the bench area during an on-court altercation be suspended for at least one game. Did Amari Stoudemire, the Suns' second best player, get pissed? He did. Did he leave the bench area to confront Ori? He did. Was Stoudemire suspended for the critically important Game 5? He was. Did the Spurs win the game and then the series en route to another championship, granting Robert Ori his seventh and final NBA title? They did. And this time, he didn't even have to take a shot. I'm not normally one for idolatry, but if someone were to pray to a basketball player for good fortune and fair tidings, I might suggest Robert Ori. When he retired after the 08 season, people wondered if he should be in the Hall of Fame. Is he a Hall of Fame player? No, not by the standard of what that usually means. But should he be in the Hall of Fame? Unquestionably. He'll never get in. So let's do the next best, most logical thing and rename it the Robert Ory Basketball Hall of Fame. He knew exactly how good he was. He consistently made teams better on both ends of the court and you had to have him out there at the end of games, no matter how old he was, no matter how many points he did or didn't have. Because in the biggest spots, he was the guy who was going to get it done somehow, some way. No player who isn't an all-time great has had more all-time moments than Robert Ory. He's the best role player of all time, and honestly, I don't think it's close. As time goes on, we'll see guys that win MVPs. We'll see other guys that win championships. But I have a hard time believing that we'll see someone who won as much as he did. And it'll be a cold day in hell before anyone does it better than Big Shot Rob. Praise be to his name.